Welcome to another FISNA product feature overview. Now in this episode, we're gonna dive deeper into those foundational elements of three-dimensional search and compare. So this is where that PNA construct that I spoke of in the intro video really starts to come to life. Now for the purposes of these feature demos, we wanna think of them in the context of kind of modern manufacturing use cases. So maybe I'm the manufacturer of chainsaws, and I bought a wood chipper company. Or maybe I'm a larger manufacturer has been around for 50 plus years and have multiple product lines or multiple business units. And maybe they operate a bit autonomously from each other. So lots of opportunity for duplication, right? So I'll call this out as we go, but just keep that in mind while we work through these demos, because these are some of the things we hear from our customers. So we want to make sure that we're bringing it back to you through this video series. So let's jump in. Now I've already loaded 3D models for a chainsaw, a brush cutter, and a chipper into our Long Away Acres folder. If you haven't watched a feature video on projects and folders yet, feel free to click on the link in the description below to see the dedicated feature video on projects and folders inside of FISNA. So let's start by looking at our wood chipper. Now, as we saw in a previous episode, FISNA gives us a nice visualization engine here of the complete wood chipper assembly without any CAD license at all. And this is helpful for a quick view of our parts. But let's take a look at the actual assembly tree tab. And what we'll see here is that all the sub assemblies and parts that make up the wood chipper are right here. Now on the surface, this might look very similar to a bomb or a parts list, but let's open this hand grip here. Now again, FISNA gives me a nice visualization engine here, so I can instantly see what my part looks like. But let's add some context. So as I mentioned earlier, maybe I'm a manufacturer of chainsaws and I bought a company that makes wood chippers. And I really don't wanna be duplicating design efforts or storing excess inventory on parts that could maybe be shared now across my entire organization. Or perhaps I'm a very large manufacturer and the wood chipper division has been designing and building its parts in isolation from the chainsaw division and its parts. But now we have an organization-wide mandate to reduce and reuse parts anywhere possible. Again, this is what we've been hearing from our customers. So no more designing a better lug nut, as I like to say. We need to streamline our design efforts, reduce complexity in manufacturing, and reduce inventory levels of parts and assemblies in our warehouses whenever possible. So let's look at how FISNA helps with these use cases. If I actually take this hand grip here and under actions, we'll see different types of matches that we can do inside of FISNA. And we'll look at each of these in a second here. But we're gonna start by using just match like we did in the last video. Now what this is gonna do is look for other parts that are similar in geometry to the part I'm currently looking at. And I can see that FISNA has found multiple matches here. And in fact, this first match on the list also looks like a grip of some sort, but I can already tell it looks a little bit different from the thumbnail preview here. However, FISNA allows me to get a more surgical view of these differences by simply clicking on actions in this second handle and selecting compare. Now what FISNA is going to do here is it's gonna place my original part on the left in red, okay? This will be my hand grip on my wood chipper. And on the right in blue, it's going to show the part I'm comparing it to. And I can instantly see they're clearly not the same. In the middle here though, I can see an amalgamation of the two parts that helps me see exactly what is different between the two. If I start turning these options, I can instantly see that the only real difference between these two is this padding around the outside of the hand grip. But if I look on the inside, which is the part that obviously attaches to the wood chipper, on first glance, I can see that these two grips should be completely interchangeable with each other. Because I don't see any highlighted areas inside that are different. So I may have just found a common part when it could be used interchangeably across multiple pieces of equipment. Again, with just geometry. But now I need to know, where is this other hand grip actually being used? So if I go to the model itself, again, I can see it here firsthand that it's very different. But if I go under actions again, but instead of just match, 
I select part match. What FISNA does with part match is take this part and find any assemblies or subassemblies where that part is currently in use. And I can see here that this hand grip is located on the handles of a brush cutter. In fact, FISNA is including for me the sub-assemblies as well, so I can decide exactly what I want to do to continue my journey. But if I click on the brush cutter itself, I can zoom in and see those hand grips right here on the brush cutter. So this is an example of where I could choose to standardize on either hand grip and then only use that hand grip in the design of both my wood chipper and my brush cutter. So again, I'm reducing the number of parts both during the design phase, but also inventory levels I'm keeping to support both pieces of equipment. Now let's go back to the wood chipper here. And let's look at the second item on the assembly list, which is the chipping unit itself. And let's look at the chipping unit's assembly tree. Now, if I scroll down here, there's one unit in particular that I'm looking for, and that would be this blue bearing block here. I wanted to start here so it could really emphasize this concept of parts within parts. And that's why I like this one, because it really stands out due to its color. Now, if I use part match again, in other words, let's find everywhere that this bearing block is actually being used. Notice that it found not only the chipping unit, which is where we came from, if you remember, but also the all-up wood chipper itself. And this is a very significant feature of FISNA because other tooling that maybe uses only shapes or external views of a particular assembly or part, FISNA is able to find parts inside of parts. So in this case, the bearing block inside of the chipping unit, inside of the all-up wood chipper. So let me give you an example of exactly what I mean by this, by comparing the bearing block to the chipping unit itself here within FISNA. Now, if I look specifically at the intersection of the bearing block and the chipping unit here, I can see exactly where that part is located and where its intersection points are. But if I do that same compare with the all up wood chipper, I can see where it's located there as well, even though technically the bearing block is part of the chipping unit assembly. In fact, I can even reduce the opacity here of the wood chipper and you'll see only the bearing block since that is what I have selected in my comparison. And lastly, if I instead go back to the chipping unit itself, where I can clearly see the blue bearing block here, and do another part match, of course, this will also help me find the unit inside of the all-up wood chipper. And now if I compare these two models, now I will see that exact same wood chipper again, but this time with the chipping unit itself color-coded, for easy identification. And I can even see the bearing block there as well. So the reason I wanted to show you this and the many different views of what is probably a seemingly straightforward set of comparisons is so you could really see the flexibility that you have and how you choose to view and compare your parts against each other at any level. So imagine if you have thousands, tens of thousands, a hundred thousand parts, the ability to get to this level of granularity, to find parts, and again, parts inside of parts inside of parts, and instantly get context on how and where they're used and help accelerate decision-making. No CAD software and all within a browser. Now let's go ahead and look at the chipper unit's assembly tree. And the first listed item here is a steel socket head screw. So let's take a look at that. Now let's do another search based on this screw. We want to find other similar screws. So let's use that match feature again that we've been kind of getting used to here. And FISNA tells us that we actually have a number of screws that are pretty similar to one on my chipper unit. But while FISNA says they're similar, I can already tell by the names that they are definitely different. I have a Torx head screw, a steel button head screw, and so on. But let's go ahead and do a compare against the socket head screw. Now, much like last time, we're seeing the two parts side by side in different colors, but you may notice that they don't really line up properly. And this actually brings us to another great feature of FISNA, 
which is the ability to auto align parts. In this situation, we can see that both of these parts were designed on different axes, so it makes it hard to compare them against each other. But if I go under Actions and select our Comparison Viewer, this brings us to an alternative view that gives me even more control over how I view and compare my parts. And I can simply select this Auto Align checkbox and FISDA will automatically overlay them on top of each other. Now when I bring them together this way, I can instantly see that the thread alignment is identical between them. We can also see that it's pretty much the exact same length. And even the head diameter and depth looks to be the same. It's literally just the head itself that is different. Now why does this matter? So as mentioned in our overview video, once we get past the design phase, all of our parts and assemblies that all of our products reference get text labels. And all of our downstream systems like ERP and MRO only know our parts by these text labels. So these five screws I showed you earlier could have easily been called parts AA, BB, CC, DD, and EE. And over time, things like stock requirements or inventory minimums are based on the original specs of the manufactured item. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say the parts AA through EE were all used in different products, and each of those products required a minimum of 100,000 stock to be held in order to support the products they are used in. So for our wood chipper, we would need to keep 100,000 of those hex screws in stock for manufacturing and maintenance. But now we have to do that for part BB through EE, right? So we're talking about having half a million screws in stock, even though the actual use case is being met through any one of their designs. So do you really need a half a million of those fasteners? Or could you standardize on one of them, say the Torx head? And maybe you could get by with only 200,000 in stock. That's 300,000 less fasteners you're keeping in inventory. You just reduced your capital outlay on excess parts you don't really need to be keeping. You're also reducing your tax burden because you don't have to pay taxes on that excess inventory at year's end. And by the way, that's just one screw. When you start applying this principle across all of your parts and assemblies, you can start to see the impact that this could have. And for large enough use cases, you could even see inventory reduction that leads to warehouse space reduction. That now starts lowering your utility bill to support sustainability initiatives. But it goes even further than this. Think about maintenance workers. They're gonna have to be constantly carrying around all these different bits and or even other tools to maintain and repair this equipment. The more standardized your parts are, the easier your products are to maintain. The easier your products are to maintain, the more wrench time for your maintenance crews. So we packed a lot into this feature video here, but we really wanted to dive deeper into that power of geometric search and compare, and also give you some concrete examples of how it can be used. So please stay with us on this feature journey through FISNA, where next time we'll be looking at Match Report, which is almost literally a one-click magic button that helps you start finding duplicate parts in your environment automatically. So click on the link in the description below, or follow along with our YouTube playlist here if that's where you're joining us from. And thanks again for joining me here at Longway Acres. Have a great day.